So people always ask me, why? Why did I invent Abigo? And the truth is, it's because I didn't have a choice. It wanted to exist, and so I agreed to create it. I've always been a person with a thousand ideas, all of them fleeting, journals of ideas, and Abigo was completely different. It pushed me, it prodded me, it poked me, it nudged me gently, and it screamed at me in the night. It needed to exist, and so there I was. Originally, I thought that Abigo wanted me to create food wrap that was going to reinvent food storage. And as I look back on my journey with it, I realize that it was actually a way to reconnect myself to food in a holistic way, as well as eventually reinvent how the world is nourished. So Abigo actually starts 12 years ago, and um, it starts in a 1977 GMC camper van. At the age of 25, I realized there was absolutely nothing nourishing about my lifestyle. I was full of calories, booze, and negativity. So has anybody, has anybody experienced your quarter life crisis at around 25? So there's a point where that happens to you and you start asking yourself, who am I and why do I exist? And it's a pretty intense time. So that happened to me, and so I sold everything, bought a van, and moved to Mexico. <laughs> very, <laughs> very logical thing to do. And it won't surprise you that I went into complete and utter culture shock. Um, everything I had known about living and eating was completely turned upside down. I was used to grabbing a quad frappuccino on my way as I rushed to work, and now I was brewing fresh black coffee in my camper van and sipping it as the sun came up. And I was diving for clams and collecting mussels on the beach and eating cayenne-soaked chicken that hung in the sun all day long. Um, and at one point I went to a butcher because I really wanted to make a, a hamburger. So I went into the butcher, asked for ground beef, and he grabbed a sirloin steak and hand ground it right in front of me. And it was kind of the first time in my life I realized what ground beef actually was. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so needless to say, I learned that good beef makes a good burger, but I don't remember the taste of the burger. I remember the smell of the butcher. I remember the colors, the textures, the sounds. I remember the man behind the counter. I remember the experience of the ground beef, not the taste of the burger. So I started to realize that it was these experiences that I was having that was really nourishing me more than the food that I was eating. So this cold turkey fresh to um, fresh start approach actually completely changed me and changed my life and it made room for Abigo to actually come into my life. Abigo started as a complete act of defiance. I truly believe that something as natural as preserving food has a nature-made solution. Humans have been storing food for thousands of years in every culture in the world, and we've used plastic wrap and man-made materials for 50. It is crazy to believe that it is the best way to store living food. So I started to research and check out what, you know, like what did we do before, and it won't surprise you to know that there's nothing as convenient as pulling a box of saran wrap out of the cupboard. That wasn't, that wasn't a thing. So I decided to recreate that with our modern convenience requirements in mind because we've evolved to that point, but I wanted to draw on nature to create food packaging that actually keeps food alive. Um, and what was really cool about it was that research quickly turned into stories because there isn't a lot of knowledge around um, food storage because it's really more of an art than a science. There's, there's just no single rule to it. So I started asking people, how did your grandmother keep food? How did her grandmother keep food? You know, like all of these questions. And it was the stories. It was the stories of people going into like the dark cold cellar that was absolutely terrifying and felt alive to get their potatoes. And it was the stories of canning with grandmothers and aunts and, and pre preserving the, the summer harvest that really started to fuel me and inspire me, and it was what was driving me to push forward with this idea. So fast forward, and 
Abigo is catching on, people are starting to understand it, and I find myself going through the entrepreneurial motions. You know, day after day, it's the same thing. I've got my elevator pitch down to a science. It's one sentence. Abigo, it's reusable beeswax food wrap that keeps fresher, food fresher longer. It, you know, just like it had distilled my entire vision into this single sentence that I realized had lost the storytelling and the stories that actually had brought Abigo to life. So here I was in January, second time in my life. Who am I? Why do I exist? What am I doing here? <laughs> and uh, signified kind of a major breakdown for me. And I, there was this nagging voice in the back of my head that kept saying, you can't put your entire mission behind the concept of keeping food fresh, even if it's fresher longer. It just wasn't enough for me. So I've always had the tagline, keep food alive, with me in this journey. And I decided I had to trust my instinct and really bring that to the surface and help people understand what it means to keep food alive, to help people share the stories that connect us to ourselves and each other and to nature. So a few weeks ago, I was in my backyard, and my friend Brenda, my neighbor, and I were chatting over the fence, and she started telling me about her grandfather and his cold cellar. And Brenda said, I would get so sick of turnips. Every single winter, turnips. The last thing we had was turnips. And she was just complaining about that's all they had to eat for the entire winter because they lasted the longest. And then she paused, and she said, I remember my grandfather peeling the turnips, and as he would peel the the skin off the turnips, he would be peeling this wax coating off the turnips. And Brenda knows what I do. And she said, my grandfather was dipping those turnips in beeswax. And so we, we were like, oh, there, there's something new. And today we take those exact same turnips and we throw them in a plastic bag and we throw them in our crisper and lock them in our giant refrigerator. And they last a couple weeks, you know, and we've lost this real understanding this wisdom. What Brenda's grandfather knew is that turnips are alive and they need to be kept in a breathable environment. And what he was doing with the beeswax is he was putting a second skin on the turnips so that they could preserve longer and not sealing them, which in essence suffocates them. And if we really take even a step back further and just look at nature, we would see that every single peel, skin, and rind that wraps any of your food that exists, it, it breathes. It's not an airtight sealant. So we need stories like Brenda's because we need to reconnect to this on a human level, not a knowledge-based level, and regain the wisdom that has been forever and is inherently ours as humankind. The other part to keep food alive is the experience. So since my daughter could stand on a chair and hold herself up at the counter, we started baking uh, pancakes every morning together. And, um, and first, it was just like everything to keep her hands out of the batter and keep the bowl on the counter. And now she gets up in the morning, rushes to the kitchen, gets out all the ingredients, puts everything on the counter, and gets me out of bed. And Parker is three. She knows the recipe off by heart. And I know it's this tradition that we have that is actually more nourishing than the pancakes are at all. So Keep Food Alive is about nourishing yourself and connecting to food in a lively, conscious, and present manner. It's a holistic way at looking at food that allows us to understand that it's the experiences around food that truly nourish our spirit. And so it's also about the stories, and those stories connect us to each other, and they connect us to ourselves. Um, my ask is that you experience what it means to keep food alive, capture those stories, and share them with me. There's two main problems. One, we're losing wisdom around keeping food alive, and we need to regain that before it's lost. And two, keeping food alive is an inspiring thing that can truly make you feel good, and when we're inspired, we do good. And I think that's worth living for.